What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Havoc OS on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the build date here is the 11th April 2020 build. The stock kernel as you can see is the Azure Perf Plus kernel and here you can see the security patch is latest of April 5th 2020. The Havoc OS version is 3.4 and the Android version is 10 of course and in the Android version section on top we have the Havoc OS logo. And in the system panel, let me show you, there is no system updater still over here, but this is an official ROM. You do not need to worry about like unofficial stuff. And this build includes the G apps. So talking about flashing this ROM, let me tell you that I am on the latest Orange Fox recovery. So here, as you can see, as soon as I boot into my TWRP, it asks for a password. That is because my storage is encrypted. So if you are on a different ROM and your storage is encrypted, you just enter your lock screen pin and hit write, then it will decrypt your storage. So that's one thing to keep in mind that you've got to be encrypted right now on the Redmi Note 7 Pro somehow, but you can still flash if your storage is like decrypted, I guess. Here on this recovery, let me show you which version is this. As you can see, this is the R10.1 underscore one underscore zero one version this is the like latest beta version i guess so this recovery as you can see does support the aggressive stock recovery deactivation or it won't like flash any aosp recovery over this so you don't need to worry about that that is the reason why i'm using this orange fox recovery the latest beta version of this orange fox recovery like i was on a different rom so i just wiped cache dalvik system and data not vendor these four things Dalvi cache system and data then I swipe to wipe then after that I go to my download folder and I selected the ROM file and just flashed it that is how simple it is to flash this ROM you don't need any fcrypt disabler or something if your storage is encrypted now let me just reboot to system now let's just quickly go into the settings and show you some more things in the configuration center of course there are customizations which I'll show you later on plenty of customizations this is Havoc OS so you don't need to worry about it in the battery section as you can see this is how it looks like we have the battery temperature on the bottom and then the last full charged like when it was charged last time then the screen on time and then if you tap over here you can see the full usage and i would say the battery life should be pretty good it can give you about six plus hours of screen on time pretty much so you don't need to worry about it and it does support the 18 watt fast charging and in the display settings we have the night light adaptive brightness etc you can enable the dark theme of course if you would like and the dark theme has been working totally fine no issues with that and in this like style section we can of course change the clocks and stuff then you can customize the accent colors if you would like and in terms of the live wallpapers these are the wallpapers we have here by default we have the compass this is the one i am using right now and the sites from the sun doodle and this like other wallpapers we have you cannot download really not much options are there by default but yeah these like nine live wallpapers are there by default present in this ROM and in the live display we have the color calibration mode and from here you can control the RGB of the screen let me go back and screen timeout you can of course set it to any and this rotation mode we have and you can set the 180 degree rotation if you'd like if you enable the auto rotation you can enable that display cutout settings are there and there is the double tap to wake and let me show you here the double tap to sleep on the status bar and the double tap to wake does work super fine no issues at all this unlocked because I have set it up the like face unlock over here and you can see the face unlock speed let me show you one more time this is how quick it unlocks with the like face unlock feature really quick and like pretty stable I would say in terms of the face unlock and in the sound settings we of course have the me audio direct you can choose whatever headphones you have and the sound output via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well should be pretty good over here on this ROM now let me go back we have the screenshot sound touch vibration touch sounds etc you can disable all of them if you would like now we have the live caption mode to over here if you want to enable it and like do some settings you can do that from this live caption mode and inside security of course we have the face unlock it sets up pretty quick no issues with that now talking about the fingerprint scanner speed let me show you as you can see it unlocked so let's try it again and it unlocks the fingerprint scanner is pretty fast no issues with whatsoever with that and even the face unlock is really really convenient i have no problems at all with that here as you can see the stock camera is anx camera so that is a really good thing this anx camera has been working super fine not a problem at all <laughs> the first time it did not take a picture but yeah this is like pretty much happens even in mi y2 sometimes and here 
the if you switch to the video mode you can see there is the vlog mode and the vlog mode is working fine too but it is a bit stuttery that you need to keep in mind now let me talk about the normal video or can i go back all right so if you talk about the normal video we have the 1080p 60fps 4k 30fps and that's pretty much it we have up to 4k 30fps option and the videos and stuff should be pretty good we have the slow motion option and stuff and taking normal photos and stuff are working super fine even the front camera of course does work super fine no issues with that so let me take an ultra pixel photo and show you if it actually works so as you can see it does work here it shows 48 megapixel and 6000 by 8000 resolution so yeah the ultra pixel photo or the 48 megapixel photos are working super fine no issues whatsoever that i could find over here with this like camera the MIUI camera or the ANX camera here like which is present by default is working like a charm no issues that I am like noticing over here. You can also install Gcam if you want to install Gcam 7 you can click on the card right here. And here are some more things that I want to talk about is the IR Bluster present on the top of the device is working super fine I have tested with this app and the IR Bluster is working flawlessly right now on this ROM. Now let's talk about DRM info as this is a Indian Redmi Note 7 Pro and here as you can see the security level shows as level 1. So you can definitely play Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p on this ROM so that should not be a problem. And in terms of the like banking apps and stuff let me show you by running this safety net test. Yes it does pass over here as you can see it says passed. So that means like banking apps and stuff like Google Pay should be working right out of the box. They should work pretty fine even without Magisk. Now let's jump into the customizations and here this is how it looks like. The configuration center has a bunch of customizations as you can see there are a lot of options. Now let's just jump into the status bar option. We have the clock settings of course you can like customize however you want and then the logo we have. You can change the position of that logo then we have brightness control and double tattoo sleep on the status bar gestures and this like sliding a finger on the status bar does control the brightness this is a really like helpful feature if you guys have been following me you guys should know and this network traffic indicator is there but i am using a different app for that but yeah you can definitely use this if you want then we have the icon style of the battery we can change it to portrait circle dotted circle filled circle etc and then there is the like battery percentage you can have it enabled or enabled while charging or totally disabled then we have status bar icons you can enable the headset bluetooth etc icons from here and let me go back we have the hd icon then the 4g icon is there this hd icon is instead of wall if you want and the bluetooth battery stats and stuff is there now let me go back to the quick settings panel we have the quick pull down to like choose from right left then the battery estimates are there then the column and row number customizations and the haptic feedback you can enable it like if you click on any toggle it will like give you a haptic feedback and here you can like add bunch of toggles too as you can see there are, are a plethora of options you have even heads up toggles and stuff and screen record screenshot etc options are there and then we have the lock screen and here double tap to sleep on the lock screen is there media artwork option is there then we have the media artwork blur level if you want that pocket detection option is there error vibration etc are there let me go back to the ambient display here we have the battery level and always on display is there in case if you some, like for some reason you want to use that the always on display is there but i won't quite recommend you as this is an ips display this will drain a lot of battery if you enable the always on display now let me go back to buttons here we have the system navigation gestures and of course the android 10 navigation gestures are working fine this is all the settings you get you can also use two or three button navigation if you want then we have the arrow key show left right and to control like cursor while typing all right and then screen of torch is there we have the long press power button toggle torch this does work i have tested it and advanced reboot option is there of course and you can also enable it in the lock screen and here if you tap on advanced reboot you can directly reboot to recover your fast boot then we have the arrow animation and with this arrow animation you can set a long swipe type as you can see swipe and hold or swipe edge to edge like you can swipe all the way to the edge or you can just like swipe and like hold it like this and you can set a action for this as you can see you can set a long left swipe or right swipe action and here you can set like screenshot or something let me show you if i set long right swipe okay so if i set this long right swipe action is screenshot as you can see it takes a screenshot i don't have to like do this 
to take a screenshot and by the way this screenshot is like the oxygen is kind of you can scroll through it as you can see it just scrolls through so you can just stop like this and it takes a like long kind of screenshot so yeah this is pretty helpful but you can like of course use these actions if you want i'll choose the no action because i don't want that and you can also have the haptic feedback on this back like whenever you do this gesture it will give you a haptic feedback and in the gestures we have the swipe to take screenshot option and this is the three finger swipe which i just showed you and that works super fine in the notifications we have the charging led notification led etc and then the edge lighting option is there if you want that you can definitely enable this edge lighting option and heads up you can disable it if you want the notification led is working super fine here no issues with that uh, while charging and stuff i mean in the screen we have the rounded corners and stuff you can change the framework values of the status bar padding and stuff if you want that force high aspect ratio is there let me go back we have the animations and here you can control the whole UI animation if you want in the misc settings we have the gaming mode and this is the settings you get in the gaming mode i don't really use that so i'm not sure and wake device option is there you can disable it while like charging it won't like light up the screen like when you plug in the charger and charging animation is there whenever you plug in like the phone with the charger this will show you the pixel kind of animation looks really cool now let me go back we have also the about section you can see the developers names and stuff huge thanks to the developers for these roms everything in the ui seems pretty smooth the stock launcher is the pixel launcher though there is no double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen but of course there is the double tap to sleep on the status bar and i like that and here to the left we have the google now cards and if you swipe all the way up you will get the app drawer and stuff and if you swipe down on the home screen you get the quick setting toggles so that's really cool and the ui stays pretty smooth i cannot really show you the enter to benchmark scores because the enter to test like fails after 16 percent or it gets stuck so yeah but the daily driving performance should be pretty good let me know in the comments what you guys think i don't have a sim card in it so i could not test volti but volti calls should be working fine and it has the pixel dialer by default so it should not have the like call recording option and stuff but i'm not really sure about that so that's pretty much it guys i'll put the important links below in the description to check it out if you want to flash this rom on your redmi note 7 pro you can definitely do that this rom seems to be pretty stable on the redmi note 7 pro and it has a lot of customizations and with the face unlock this is really cool so thanks so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet this is tito from gary and tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now